In this video, we're gonna take this photo and we're gonna turn it into this photo using Lightroom and Photoshop. Well, my name is Matt Kloskowski. I wanna welcome you to this series where I've been doing before and afters, basically taking you through the entire editing process of one of my raw photos. In fact, you get to download the raw photo. So here's, uh, here's what to do. Um, just click on this link right here. It'll take you to my website. You can download the file for free. There is an email sign up on there. You can sign up for my email community. I'm not gonna make you do it. Uh, I would love it if you did. It just helps me keep in touch with everybody. But either way, the photo is free. You can go there and download it. The other thing too is if you like these videos and you're watching it here on YouTube, just click on the subscribe button right there. And that way you'll get these delivered right to your YouTube feed all the time. Okay, so uh, so let's dive into, into the photo. So this was taken at a place called Second Beach. It's on the Olympic coast, uh, just outside of Seattle, Washington. So actually my second trip to Second Beach, because my first trip there, I ended up at a place called First Beach, even though I thought I was at Second Beach, but I wasn't. Um, anyway, really cool place, got super lucky. There were some tide pools uh, that were forming around the rock, so it got a little bit of a reflection. The wind wasn't cranking up too much, so it wasn't doing anything to the reflection. It was nice and smooth, and, uh, and it ended up with a really pretty sunset. So uh, I'll take you through the entire process from start to finish. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do here is, uh, especially when I have um, more of a challenging exposure situation like we have here. You know, there's a, there's detail in the sky that can be recovered. There's detail in the foreground and I, I want to get a quick look at it. So I just kind of wiggle around the exposure slider. And what that does is, is it, it kind of gives me a base of what I have to work with. Like, all right, I know I got the detail, um, in the sky back here. And I know I got plenty of detail in the foreground. So, so now I kind of, it kind of gives me a game plan almost. Um, I know neither way can I, can I go, you know, one direction with this, but once I start maybe pulling back some of the highlights a little bit here, um, I think I'm gonna really kind of save that for the graduated filter because if I just pull back highlights, you know, sometimes it starts to look a little bit artificial um, in some of these brighter spots here. So I'm not gonna do it too much. I'll, I'll open up the shadows a decent amount. Um, it gets kind of flat when you open up the shadows, so that's why I'm gonna increase the exposure a little bit too. And, uh, and just know that eventually I'll be able to take care of this guy. So I'm not gonna worry about it quite yet, but eventually I'll get to that. Uh, I'll do a, a quick whites and blacks adjustment, member option or alt click. And if you click on whites, everything goes black, drag it to the right. And you know, it'll start to blow out over the sky pretty quick there. I'm okay with a little bit of it there because I know I'm gonna pull it back. Um, same thing on blacks. Option or alt click, drag it to the left. You get a couple little black specks there. So it's good black point. Um, this is going to be a good one for clarity. So there's a you know there's a lot of detail in here. Um, there's a lot of you know contrast in here. So clarity will really bring that out pretty well. So um, and it, it'll work on the clouds. It'll work on the foreground. So I'm not too worried about it. All right. Um, let's see here. So as I take a look at the overall kind of temperature of the photo, I think I want to warm it up a little bit. So I'm going to bring that temperature slider to the right just a bit. Had a warmer feel to me. You can kind of see the tones in the sky and some of the glow back here. So I'm just going to work with it. All right, next up, I'm going to go down to, uh, let's, we'll check out HSL. I'm going to play around with the oranges and the reds and see what it does to the sky with the luminance. I'm not quite sure. All right. So it's not doing anything on the uh, red. See the oranges here? All right. So I can kind of pull those back. I can make them brighter. You know what? Neither one is working, but as I do look at it, I can probably boost the orange saturation a little bit. And that'll keep it, that'll, you know, if I boost the oranges here, I don't have to increase the overall color saturation, which will affect the whole photo. Uh, I might even go over here to the greens and even some of the yellows. Got a little bit on the hill back there. So that's all looking good. Next thing, detail. So I usually zoom into whatever's close to the front of my lens, you know, um, either that one or that one right there. I'm usually gonna, I'm gonna kind of split the difference and go right here. Uh, amount, I can crank my amount slider up quite a bit. Um, I'm gonna get close to 100 there. Radius, I generally just leave that at about 1.3, 1.4, and then detail. Again, I can crank that up. I don't know that I want to go any further with it. Take a look at what happens here. So um, if you look at some of the, the areas back here, if I start to crank my detail up, it gets really textured. 
Um, you could pull that back with the masking slider, but I don't think we have to. I mean, I think there's a lot of nice sharp detail here. Um, I was on a tripod, so I think when I turn that little toggle switch off here, that's before. And that's after. I think that's plenty of sharpness for this, so I'm not really going to worry about pushing that anymore. Okay, next up, lens corrections. Let's zoom back out here. Uh, first off, I always enable profile corrections, which you'll find the lens and everything. And if you look at it, it, it handles a little bit of distortion, mostly gets rid of some of the vignette on there. Um, I am going to remove chromatic aberration. Okay, right over here. So you'll see this in most of the places that you'll see this is gonna be up here along the trees. I'm even gonna zoom in a little bit further. You see that little green fringe around the trees? Uh, if I start to scroll along the bottom here, you'll start to see it. You see another little fringe here. You see some little fringes on the outside. Sometimes they're either green or they're magenta. So if I click on remove chromatic aberration, that gets rid of them. All right, you really gotta look though, okay? This, this is a pixel peeper thing. I usually only do this, especially if I'm gonna print it. If I were just posting this to the web, I'd never worry about it. But take a look here. Let me see if I can even get you, get you zoomed in a little bit further. There we go. So take a look at this one. We're gonna click on it now. That's after, that's before, after, before. So you can see, definitely see a little bit of a difference there. Okay, uh, next up, let's go on down to nothing to worry about when it comes to transform. Uh, we're gonna go down here to effects. And the main thing I'm gonna use this for is adding a little bit of a vignette here. Just gonna bring that out, okay. I'm actually not sure of the vignette just yet because there's a couple more things I wanna do to the photo and we're gonna circle back around to the sky. So let's go back here to our graduated filter right up the top. And I'm gonna bring the exposure negative. I don't really know how much at this point. And I'm just gonna angle that down like so, okay? So now I'm able to darken the sky. That's probably a little bit too dark for me. So I'm just gonna maybe split the difference there. Uh, I might even add a little bit more clarity to it. it kind of just gives you a little bit more depth to the clouds up there. Um, so I think that's looking pretty good. If I go, notice how it darkened. Let me go click the toggle switch to show you the before and the after. Notice how it starts to darken the hill. Um, it would do that if I used a neutral density grad in the field. So that, that's never gonna go away. Even if I did this in the field before I actually took the photo, that's still gonna be there. A Couple of options we have. I'll try shadows, all right? Shadows usually works pretty good. Here's the reason why it's not working on this photo is because shadows works good when my sky is a lot brighter. I have a sky that's got a lot of darker clouds in it, okay? And it's actually seeing some of those darker clouds as shadows because of their tone. So it's actually brightening the sky when I do this. Sometimes when it's just a blue sky, I have no problems. I can increase the shadows and that just opens up that part. But in this example, it's not working out great. So I'll do it a little bit, but then we can always just revert over here to our brush go down towards the bottom, click on erase. And then all I gotta do is just drag right on there. In fact, I'm even gonna show you the overlay. Okay, I can drag along the bottom. If I wanna keep it to the edge, I can turn on auto mask. All right, and as long as that outer ring stays away, it's gonna do the edge really good. I'm not gonna worry about those trees because they're silhouettes already. So I'm not really worried about getting the detail back in them. Okay. Just drag right along there. I'm just trying to outline the edge. And that's the key here. So I'm outlining. Okay. Once I get done outlining the edge, then I turn auto mask off because it actually works a lot faster and smoother with that option off. So then I just turn auto mask off and I'll just go through here and erase the rest of it away. It's actually much easier if you make your brush larger and now I can just erase all that. Okay, so now my grad filter is not going to affect that foreground area that I had over here. All right, uh, the other thing I wanna do, let's see here. You know what? 
I'm gonna close that. I think we're just about done. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna take my brush tool and I'm gonna add some warmth to this. I'm just gonna paint a little bit of warmth up here in these hills and uh, just make it a little bit more yellow, a little bit warmer up there. I'm gonna hit new and I'm gonna paint a little bit of warmth and a little tiny bit of exposure just on the foreground here. All right, I'm not even gonna worry about the edges. I can make my brush smaller if I was gonna get really fine tuned with it. And if you have some extra time, go for it. But um, just gonna brighten those just a little bit to kind of give some more detail to them. All right, cool. So let's close that part. Now I'm gonna go back down here to my vignette. Ooh, you know what? One more spot here. See that? So what do you do with this? Um, you know, if I bring back, let's zoom back into it. If I bring back my highlights, I can get more detail in there, but I don't really want to tweak the highlights anymore. So your option could be go grab your exposure brush and, uh, and just bring down that exposure. And I can bring back some of the detail in there. We could actually also play with this a little bit. We can have some fun with it in that I could go grab my radial filter I could open up the exposure and the warmth a little bit and I could just drop it right on there. Okay, um, what I'd need to do is because if you look at it, it's affecting everything outside the circle. If I click on invert mask over here down at the bottom, then I reflect it right over to here. So let's just bring down the exposure, open up that warmth, but you almost, almost you kind of put a, a almost a, a bit of sunlight coming through there, a bit of glow. Uh, we could probably even mess around with clarity a little bit on it, maybe some dehaze. There you go. Right. So it almost looks like there's a little bit of glow coming down there. You can kind of drag that around anywhere you want and make it bigger, smaller. I don't know that I want to make it that big. Kind of just looking at it here. Yeah, we definitely want it smaller. Okay, so there's a couple things you could do if you wanted to play around with that. I'm not sure that I'm going to keep that option on there. I'm probably going to just hit reset on it, but you could have a little bit of fun. If you just lost all detail in there, uh, there's definitely some other ways you could go with it. Okay, now last thing we need to do to finish up here, just do a little bit of cleanup. I already know I'm going to have to go into Photoshop. The reason why I have to go into Photoshop, or at least I want to go into Photoshop, I, I personally don't like this tree up here. I like the way everything angles and I like the way it starts to gradually build uh, as we go here, smaller tree, larger tree, sticks up higher, maybe not that one, but I like the way it builds as we go to the right, this tree just stops it for me. It stops the sky. So I already know I'm going to go into Photoshop. There's some little spots up in the sky. I could use my, uh, my spot retouching uh, or spot healing brush if I want to do right here in Lightroom to get rid of those. I know I'm going to have to go to Photoshop to get rid of that. So let's just head over there. And I'm going to create myself a brand new layer right down here at the bottom of the layers palette. Create a new layer. I'm going to hit the J key for the spot healing brush. All right, you'll see it right over here in the toolbox. I'm going to make sure I have sample all layers on because that's going to let me work on that separate layer. And then I'm just going to zoom into the photo. I'm going to do some spot retouching first. All right, now you're going to see me get pretty picky here. I'm removing a lot of these little spots on the beach because I'm imagining printing this. And when I print this, people will look at it depending on where they're standing and it, they're, it's gonna look like, all right, what are those little spots? Is it a bird? Is it a spot on the print? Is it a piece of dust? What is it? So I, I'm not necessarily, I don't feel like my photos need to be pristine. I'm just imagining this hung up on the wall, I'm imagining it printed, and I'm imagining that these little spots start to interrupt things. So, and I don't want people guessing what that stuff is, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. Some little specks inside the little tide pools here. Oh, that's looking good. A couple little ones right up there. All right, and then the other thing is, um, I'm gonna make sure I do some border patrol. Just make sure you don't have anything along the borders here. There's a little bit of a brighter spot. I think that looks okay. Looking good. And then let's attack the larger part here. It's going to be this tree. I'm going to attack it in pieces. What you know what I say that I'm going to try it all at once. Let's see. Not bad. <laughs> so we go there and then I'll just scroll down. I'll keep going down and down and down and down. And I think you know what I think you'd be if you didn't know it was there, you'd be hard pressed to really know 
anything actually happen there. Uh, the other thing, don't forget about the reflection. Go ahead and get rid of that, like so. Cool, all right, looking good. Uh, only thing we have to do at this point, we go File, Save. I don't have to do Save As or anything like that. That gets me back over here to Lightroom with my copied version of my photo. I am gonna go back to the vignette, add a little bit of a stronger vignette to this one here. I think it'll add to the mood. There we go. All right, let's go to the before photo. I'm gonna hit reset. There we go. So that's our before photo. That's our after photo. So before and after. Well, there you have my entire workflow, my entire process from start to finish, Lightroom and the Photoshop and back again uh, for that photo. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you do like it, don't forget you can go to that link and download the raw file. Uh, also, if you like these videos, please click that subscribe button right there. Um, that way you'll sign up for my YouTube page and you'll get these videos delivered to you. You don't have to go searching around for them and you won't miss new ones whenever I create them. All right, thanks so much everybody and I'll talk to you again real soon.